All right, so let's talk about a few things right quick, Jeremy. One of the things that I want us to take into consideration too is what's called an inverted yield curve, right? And basically, so typically, like long-term bonds always have higher yields than short-term bonds, right? But anytime that turns around to where the short-term bonds have a higher yield than long-term bonds, that's an inverted yield curve. And that can be telling us that we're headed to a recession. Until you see that, don't worry about a recession, right? Don't worry about a recession. Let me get that out there. So one of the things that you can always listen to, like I want y'all to listen to this, listen to me well. Right there, I want y'all to have my Wall Street travel hoodie on, man. I don't like promoting for nobody else. God damn it. Shit. Right? <laughs> damn, my, I'm just like, I hate when I'm traveling because I don't be on my shit like I'm supposed to be. You hear me? All right. So one of the things that you look for all the time is the yield curve. Right? The yield curve. So anytime there's an inverted yield curve, then you can start panicking. We're not really panicking, but you know what we headed for. So one of the things I often tell the trappers about is just understanding what type of economic environment that we in. Hold up, man. I don't feel right doing this with these people shit on. All right. Here we go. All right, cool. All right. Here we go. Check it out. What's good, trappers, man? It's your boy, the Wall Street Trap. You hear me? You know what I'm saying? Look, man, they got a lot going on in the market right now. And it's up to me because nobody else ain't going to do it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else want to tell you what to buy. Everybody else want to, you know, give y'all signals and all this. And that's cool. But my goal is to 100% teach the culture, the community, and everybody who on the process to building wealth. Right? My goal is to teach us how to play this game every day, all day, and twice on Sundays. You know what I'm saying? My goal is to show us and to tell us and to help us learn how to truly build wealth in these type of markets, right? So one of the things I'm gonna show you what you look for, like in these type of markets, is called like the inverted yield curve. And so with the inverted yield curve, so normally long-term bonds, normally long-term bonds have higher yields right, which is returns, right, then short-term bonds. So anytime we see the short-term bond have a higher yield than the long-term bond, that is an inverse effect. So we all understand inverse is like the reverse of what we really want. Anytime that happens, that signals that we are in a recession waiting to happen. Right? That's a recession on the way. So until you see that happening, don't panic about a recession. Don't panic about a crash. Right? Think don't panic about a recession or a crash until you see that happen. Right? So that's one thing I want you to know. So if you like, man, the market about to crash the market until that happens. This is why it's important for us to pay attention to bonds. Right. And yields. Right. Buying yields. Why is it important for us to pay attention to bonds? Because this is what investors do. Right. So now I'm taking you into the psychology of how investors work. When stocks become too risky, one of the things investors like to do is go to bonds. Bro, you down 140. Man, I'm down about 500. It's OK. I'm not even paying. And I promise you that. And that's just on some options contracts. That ain't talking about my regular portfolio. I'm probably down about six hundred some thousand dollars, seven hundred thousand dollars right now. It's okay, right? It's okay. You know why it's okay? Because that's part of this game. You know what I'm saying? That's part of this game. That's why I always say that it is important for us to always think long term, right? My options contracts are long term, right? And all we gonna do is go back, revitalize what's going on. And set new contracts. I just text my partners today. In the in my group chat, look what I say. I say, bro, I say, if we patient, if we are truly patient, we can make a whole, we can print a whole lot of money in this market. It was like, man, what you talking about? I said, listen, all we got to do is pay attention to what's going on. We don't got to try to guess the bottom. We understand that there's a lot going on right now. 
right? Anytime there's an uncertainty with money, Apple taking the whole market is taking a beat, but that's okay. But it's not even taking a beat, and the market is truly just down 10%. If y'all call that a beating, what happens when the market go down 30%, 40%, 50%? Y'all really going to get scared, right? It's only down 10%, 15%. Y'all really going to be scared if the market go down like it's supposed to. You can't be a... Listen, I'm, in markets like this, I'm going to be real with you. These are the type of markets that tell you if you truly read to invest in stocks. Everybody looks like a genius when the market is flying because it's easy to say, you know, this stock is going to run, that stock is going to, it's easy to say that type of stuff. But one of the things I tell Travis Anonymous, one of the things I tell Travis that's important for us to do is understand the value of a business. The reason why it's important for us to understand the value of a business is because the market doesn't give us value. The stock market prices are based on how people feel, right? And we don't want to care about how people feel. We want to know what the business is worth. Understanding what the business is works. Understanding what the business is worth is way more important than the, the stock market price. Why? Because this now tells us if the market, if, if we were paying too much for a business or if we we're paying fair value for a business. Right. So one of the things I told my people was I said, this is a market where you can make a lot of money because why? Because there's uncertainty around the dollar. Right. Anytime there's uncertainty around the dollar, the market will panic. Why? Because the dollar, even though it's worthless, it is the means of exchange for all assets. Trap, how's the dollar worthless? It can't be worthless if it's still a means of exchange. OK, true. Check out. Let's understand this. Let's just look at this from a sound and logical perspective. The only way anything positive can come from that account is if you first do what? You pay the thirty thousand dollars back. So the only way the U.S. dollar can truly be positive is if they pay off the $30 trillion in debt that they have. But what happens is it is still a means of exchange because so many people's wealth is attached to the dollar. So what the Fed said to America was, look, bro, we not... We was already printing $120 billion a month. We was buying back bonds. But they not about to do that no more. And so because they not about to buy back bonds no more, they are now letting the market correct itself. That takes away the false confidence that the market had. The market had false confidence because they knew the Fed was buying bonds, buying bonds, buying bonds. And so what happens when the Fed buys bonds, the Fed now puts money into the market and they buy bonds. So the Fed say, yo, we're not buying bonds no more. We're going from 120, 120 million a month to 30 million a month. So that causes panic. And you already in an interest, low interest rate environment, right? And so what happens is now, if the Fed doesn't say something positive, if the Fed doesn't say something positive, the market is going to fall even more. If the Fed is like, if the Fed sit back and be like, nope, yo, we're not buying nothing. We good. Because the Fed has a balance sheet. So if the Fed sit back and be like, nah, dog, we're not, um, we not, we not, we not doing none of that no more. We good. Then the market is going to fall some more. Right? The first post I made of the year, I said, these are the five stocks that I like. But I expect us to have a correction this year of 10% or better at some point. The reason why I said that was because we had the shortest bear market ever. Stocks started surging. It only lasted for a couple of days. There is no reason why during a pandemic where people were losing houses, where people were losing jobs, there was no reason why we should have had companies worth $2 trillion, $1 trillion. No company should have been worth that in an environment where the economy wasn't in good shape. There was no reason why Apple should be pushing two, should have been pushing $2 trillion almost to three. There's no reason why Amazon should have been a $1 trillion. There's no reason why we should have three companies in the trillions when people are losing jobs. So, yes, it was a great run. 
people made money. But now, this is time. But if we notice something, here's one of the things we heard. There was $26 billion on the sideline waiting to be invested. They had more money on the sideline than ever before. Why? Because they understood that this had to happen. Right? Let's go a little further. One of the things that was happening was we were having what is called a rollover correction. I'm giving y'all a game right now. I'm letting y'all know that I like, not only do I study the market, I study economy. Right? I like to call myself like a semi-economist. Right? You know why? Because if you learn the economy, it goes hand in. Learn understanding the economy is the first cousin to understanding the stock market. The reason why most people won't be successful in the economy, that's why one of the things I teach in Trap Masters is learn the economy. Like I teach them stuff about the economy in my mentorship because when you see these things happening, when you start seeing these things happening, this is what's going on in the in the market. Right? The economy is the first cousin to the stock market, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like 100%. Right, if we can start understanding what's going on in an economy, listen. Let me tell y'all something too, bro. When it come to building wealth, yo, it's more than just buying a stock. You think these people get wealthy just from I'm a buy a stock? Uh, you think these people just get wealthy from guessing? We gotta stop guessing, and we gotta truly say, yo, like, cool. This was going on in the market. Not a problem. Not a problem. Because there's nothing new that they're gonna do that's gonna happen. Right, this is why <laughs> Trap got me into macro. You gotta understand macro, macro, microeconomics, quantitative data. You gotta understand these type of things, and it's not nothing that you can't. Here's the dope part: is here's the dope part. That was it. <laughs> here's the dope part: is you're actually smarter than what you realize that you are. Right? Let me show you how smart you are. That you can you can be an economist off based off data like this. When the new iPhone drops, what is going to happen at, at all Apple stores around the country? What's going to happen? Boom. Somebody said they're flooded. At that point, check this out. Because you understand that, guess what you understand? Macroeconomics. You understand that because of, the, because of the event, here's the things, quantitative data that's going to take place. Because you understand that, you understand macroeconomics 100%. Because all it is is saying that you understand that during an event, these are the things that are going to transpire. That's it. But they use these words, macroeconomics, microeconomics, quantitative data, qualitative data. They use them words to throw you off, right? They use words like that to throw you off to make you feel like you can't. Like, damn, what that is? I don't know what that is. No, you understand exactly what it is. You understand that if you were hustling on the block, you understand that on the first and the third, people get checks. So you give credit on the 30th and the 29th to certain people. Why? Because soon as they get their check, they're going to give you them. Cool. Those are customers you can give your money to, your product to. That's understanding economics. If you can understand things like that, you can understand economics. I promise you, that is economics. Economics is understanding the cause and effect of the economy based on certain events that take place. I swear. When people ask me, I'll be like, yo, this shit remind me of the street. It's the same thing. They just use these beautiful eight, nine letter words, eight, nine um, character words that you make you feel crazy. But if you can understand, okay, the first and the third, these when the checks come out. So when the checks come out, I can give such and such, such and such, such and such, some on the 28th, the 29th, the 30th, because I know when the check comes, they're going to pay me my money. That's, I done gave a product already that I, I done sold a product already. It's cool. That's economics. In this economic environment, this tends to happen over time. That's economics, family. That is economics. You feel me? And once you understand that, you can play this game. So let's move a little further.